don't cook, sew, or bake. From me as a friend, you're going to get bugs. <laughs> Ever since I was about six years old, I've loved insects. I loved watching inchworms inch their way across a leaf, the colors and patterns in butterfly wings, even the red and blue jewels on the backs of gypsy moth caterpillars. To me, they were all wonderful. I understand some of you may not like bugs, but the truth is, if all insects were to disappear tomorrow, we would no longer have the animals that eat them, like birds or frogs. Flowers wouldn't be pollinated, so we'd lose most of the fruits and vegetables we enjoy. Nature as we know it would be gone. There are beneficial insects all around us, doing battle for us, keeping our gardens healthy. We need to learn about these beneficial insects. The good guys know who they are and go outside to find them, because if we have a good diversity of those good guys, then we can offset the populations of the destructive insects that are hurting, even killing our plants. These good guys can really help us keep our gardens healthy. That's why last April, when I was walking my dog, and I came across two praying mantis egg cases. I felt like I'd won the lottery. <laughs> Praying mantis are predators, feeding on other insects. You can use them in your garden to control pests instead of using chemicals. I started thinking of all the people I could share them with: friends, neighbors, even some farmers who were just starting their gardens, thinking about their flowers and vegetables. They would love these guys. So I took the egg cases home, and I put them in a container with good ventilation. But I kept them in a safe place outside because I didn't want them to hatch before food was available for them. And I checked on them every day. A few months later, they hatched, and I had hundreds of praying mantises. Now, when praying mantises are young, you can actually keep a lot of them together as long as they're well fed. So sometimes I had tanks with up to 50 mantises living in them. However, this meant that cleaning the tanks became a three-person job, and I enlisted the help of my husband and my son. My son would stand ready with the new container at the side of the tank. I had a small stick that I lowered into the tank to transfer the tiny mantises out. Now, in the more than 20 years that I've been studying insects, I found that praying mantises are very intelligent. In fact, I think they even have emotions. You can watch their behavior and see that they're processing information. Being fearful, or cautious, or defensive. <laughs> so, to encourage the tiny mantises to be brave enough to climb that new stick in their tank. I did what any good motivational speaker would do. I cheered them on, <laughs> telling them, "You can do it. You've got this." And it worked. My husband was to keep any potential escapees at bay by creating a slight breeze at the top of the tank. So the entire time, he was doing this. <laughs> When he got lightheaded. We would stop and take a break, but then we'd be right back at it. We looked ridiculous, and to answer everyone's question, no, we don't have any video of that precious time in our lives. When the praying mantis were about two weeks old, we started looking for people who might want them. I sent out emails that began with "free." To a good home. <laughs> to the lucky responders, I put the mantises in little snack cups with holes in the lid and plenty of fruit flies to eat, and then I delivered them in gift bags. 
with cards that read, fragile, live insects, handle with care. My husband even told his co-workers in Boston that I had an army of praying mantises. Did they want any? And they did. They wanted them for their kids to release in the backyards. They were going to use them as their own teachable moments and explain to the kids that there were good, useful bugs out there. It was amazing how many people wanted them. And seeing that positive response, my husband asked the Boston Parks Department, can we release some here on the trees? And they said yes. So the trees that we put them on were mostly lindens. Lindens are pollinated by bees, which means we cannot, do not treat them with insecticides. But all summer long, they're attacked by aphids and leafhoppers, any number of pests that literally drain the strength from these trees. So putting my praying mantis on was a great idea. But not everybody wants praying mantis in their gardens. Praying mantis are generalist feeders, which means they'll go after anything that lands or flies in front of them, including butterflies. Nature is not always pretty. In fact, I didn't put any of the mantises in my own garden. My garden is solely designed to attract and sustain the entire life cycle of the monarch butterfly. So praying mantis work well in some situations, but not in all of them. The good news is, there are a lot of other beneficial insects out there. I want to encourage all of you to get familiar with them. You know some already. Like ladybugs, in their lifetime, they'll eat over 5,000 aphids. Or dragonflies. Their favorite food? Mosquitoes. But they'll go after other smaller insects, too. The other one I love is the green lacewing. They're so beautiful and delicate. I call them the fairies in the garden. The adult eats nectar and pollen, but the young stage, the larval stage, looks like a little alligator and is just as ferocious, gobbling up hundreds of aphids every week. The other one I know you'll recognize is a stink bug. Not the stink bug that comes into your homes and hibernates in your curtains all winter. This one still stinks, but he's good. He's called the spined soldier bug. He has soldier in the name. You know he's out there fighting for you. I had the young stage in my garden this summer. No bigger than an M&M, didn't even have his wings, going after a full-grown hickory tussock moth caterpillar. And let's not forget about spiders. <laughs> They're actually arachnids, not insects. But there's over 3,400 species in North America. All of them are predators going after the insects that are harming our plants. So once you've gotten to know some of these good guys and you're comfortable recognizing them, then I want you to go out and look for them. Go in your yards, look at the flowers, look under the leaves, look in the leaf litter. You can even look in the trees. They're already out there, in the trenches, doing battle for us. We will always have the destructive insects. That's OK. They're the food for the good guys. And if we have enough diversity of those good guys, then we've achieved a balance. Balance is the key to a healthy garden, which will contribute to a healthy environment. And the next time you find yourself on the Boston Common or in the public garden, take a good look at the trees, especially the lindens. You might just see someone looking back at you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.